Hi friends, this is Sarah. Welcome to Crafting and Relaxing. Today I'm gonna make a bit of a mixed media mess. I was looking at my goals journal for the month and I had try something new and I hadn't tried anything new. And I did a project this week with my crackle glaze, which I've only used a couple of times. I saw amazing projects with it. That's why I got it. I was really inspired and I wanted to get some and try it. I haven't had good luck. I mean, I have, I'm not sorry I bought it. I just haven't made anything with it that made me go, oh, everyone should have that and I wanna use it on everything else. Does that make sense? I, I thought, okay, let's try it. Part of what I'm not happy with is I can't really see the crackle. I can't get it to pop. And so what I thought about was maybe I need to mix it with something. Maybe I need to use it with different products. Maybe I'm always using it with the same product and it's just not exciting with that. I usually do my sprays and messy stuff out in the shop. There we go. If you're looking for one of those channels where they make a plan and their videos are super organized and they've tested everything behind the scenes, well, you're not on the right channel. So go ahead and move along. <laughs> but if you wanna see what happens when you combine random things sometimes without a plan, then my channel is the one for you. When it comes to mixed media, I am no expert. I am just someone who wants to have fun. Keep that in mind, right? If you wanna go watch an expert and find out how we should have done this afterwards, oh, I could have put water in that one, then, you know, that's fine, that's good. I might do that. Maybe later today I'll Google some and go, oh, that's what I'm doing wrong. But we're not there yet. And I think sometimes you just gotta try it. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you've heard me talk about my sister and put the paint on the canvas and that is her version of just do it and it's I would call her and ask her questions like should I prep it should I do this should I what about this and she would say to me every time without fail put the paint on the canvas you know do you do you have to buy it what about gesso they talk about gesso do you have to buy that do you have to no she would say, put the paint on the canvas. So I say to you, if you have a project that's been sitting around in your house and you're nervous to try it, and it could be anything, right? It could be refinishing furniture. It could be, oh, that seems like a lot, you guys. It could be a project out in the yard. It could be cards. Maybe you watch my card videos and you think, oh, I could never do that. Well, why not? Why couldn't you? Why couldn't you do it? So just try it. I think that is pretty much the secret to the universe. It applies to anything. It can be crafts, it can be work, it can be, you know, not being shy to call someone, and put yourself out there and get to know people. So I say to you, put the paint on the canvas. So what I'm doing is this one is Distress Oxide Faded Jeans. This one is Art Company's Purple Ink, right? purple ink marker. This one is Distress Ink and I'm adding it in. And what I'm wondering is, would I be happier with my results? Oh my gosh, kind of looks not, I thought it was gonna be more pink, like a little more spring and cheerful. It is worn lipstick. I don't know where it came from, I can honestly say. Now I'm gonna take this and just Put it right here. Okay, then this one was some color shift and I put the color shift paint down under it and then put the crackle glaze on top of it. And what I was thinking about was products that were thin, not heavy body products that would control the glaze itself and not allow it to do what it wants. Does that make sense? Like Dina Wakely's paints, they're super thick and juicy and wonderful and they're great for gel printing and getting texture, but I don't think they would be as good for this. Whereas Diane Reevely's, her paints are a watery texture that goes more with her style. The people's paints are about what they like to do. I do have decent clothes, you guys, but I do projects like this uh, on a moment's notice and I don't stop to think about what I'm wearing so I just wear stuff like this at home. Plus, I mean dogs, right? Two dogs, two cats. 
it is always hairy here. This one, should we mix it or should we put it down first? Or should we put a layer? Let's try putting a layer of the glaze. Okay, let's do this one different. Let's put this back on. I'll put a layer of the glaze down and then maybe we can come back and like almost burnish over the top and rub stuff in there and see. Now, I know it says on the package not to brush it out too thin because if you do, you're not leaving enough to crackle. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna put this on here. Pretty thick, really. Nice and juicy. I'm using the brush more as a scoop than a brush. And this is my art journal where I mess around with different things. Sometimes I have a plan when I'm doing a page in here, but sometimes I'm just trying techniques. And it's not uncommon for me to make a ridiculous page like this and then come back in over the top later and actually turn it into something. It's not like a wasted page or anything. I won't necessarily just tear it out. Okay, we'll let those sit. It's 10.30 in the morning and I think that's probably gonna need some time, don't you? I'm gonna zoom you in a little so you can see better and just kind of look at the thicknesses on the page. And then we'll see how it turns out. So the purple one is already starting to dry. This one, a little bit smeary. This one's super thick. And this one looks pretty thick too. And then of course that one we just did. So I don't know if I have enough necessarily in the purple one. And I wonder, has anybody ever used this in a pour? Like can Andrea put this in hers? Oops, the worn lipstick is trying to get everywhere. So in an art journal, when that happens, just come in here and get it. This is my messiness. We'll let it dry. Then we'll come back, see how this stuff looks and how we liked it. And we're using Deco Art Media Crackle Glaze. And the reason I chose this one is because it was clear. I thought I would have more fun. I wrote Crackle Glaze on the top with it being clear, but maybe I should have gotten the Crackle Paste, which is white. Maybe I would have had more success with that. Sometimes you're watching, you're seeing projects, finished projects from people who are much more familiar with a product and it takes time to get to know product and experiment with them. I'm back and it's 8 p.m. So this has been on here all day. And let me show you how it turned out. The purple, nah, can you see? There is some crackle, but the ink didn't mix at all. You know what I mean? The purple was from the pen, so it probably just soaked into the paper and then there was none on the actual page to work with this. I'm going to pull this off because I think the glare actually will help you see the crackle. So a thinner ink just soaked in down below. Now what I am seeing is, I know it's shocking, but if you read the directions it says to put it on with a brush and when I use a knife I get cool texture in it but I can't get enough crackle because I have places that I'm getting it too thin. I think in general, I'm not putting it on thick enough because down here, I thought that was ridiculously thick and it looks amazing. And I think it's gonna be more fun when we hit it with some color in a minute. This part up here, the Distress Oxide that I sprayed, because these are water reactive and this is a water-based product, it changed the color when I put it on and made a little bit of interesting effect in there. So I think this would be fun, brushing, putting it on, letting it dry, and then brushing the crackle glaze on really thick over it. You might get some interesting effects. The ink, oh, we should have used this one, Dusty Concord, it wasn't this one the whatever it was the raspberry or whatever distress ink that we used it i don't know it's just not exciting it shows some crackle but there was no effect of the crackle on the color does that make sense like i wanted it to change the color or to make a pattern or do something like it did here where it's water reactive and this one this is kind of fun but again, they didn't like mix and do anything interesting. You know, I guess I was trying to get like the crackle look in the color. And this was Color Shift Blue Flash. It's one of my favorites. I'll put it on just about anything. Then 
So we've looked at that one. And then down here, the same. If it's really thin, you get smaller crackles. When it's thicker, you get bigger. But this, this is what I've been trying to figure out. Can we, okay, if we got a good section of crackle and it was dry, then can we play with it and dress it up? And I'll just do small, narrow strips to show you what I'm talking about. See how the crackle comes alive when you put some color over it? That's what I was thinking. And I think that's probably what I need to do more of is brush it on and then put something over it. Now, I think I've tried putting something thin over it before. I seem to recall that the great ink incident uh, I don't edit out the terrible bad things that happen in my videos, but I seem to recall that it's somehow related to crackle glaze or trying to layer something. So that one is almost too thin. It just, I mean, it just goes right through it. It did leave a little bit of neat pattern right there. Let's hit it with a Kleenex and see if we can pull some off. No, it just goes right through the glaze and soaks into the paper. So I don't think a thinner one is the answer. Let's try another. So this is the heavy body. This is Dina Wakely's paint, and that was amazing. Let's try one of these. This is a little bit thinner, but it's paint. So it might work. And I don't think that a brush is really the answer, because I think you want it to drip down in there. I'm wiping paint on my clothes while I'm wandering around looking for stuff. So that's why I always have paint on my clothes. Because I use them like drop cloths. So I'm thinking like, pat it. And that's not very well mixed, but it doesn't matter for what we're doing. This is a more liquid paint. It's more like Dilutions. It's like a cross between Dilutions and maybe a color shift. Okay, now this is what I, aha, that's what I was wondering. So if you guys know how to mix the color into the crackle and apply it, and get a good effect. Maybe if I had mixed it really well and then put it on with the brush, but thick, like maybe something crazy cool would have happened here. But I think this is the answer for me, is to put it on thick, let it dry, and then come back and hit it. And I think the blue is better because it has a higher contrast, right? Like this might be neat on a black paper, but it's a little bit too light here. So anyway, that's playing with my crackle glaze and trying to really figure it out and figure out how to mix it with other things and layer it. And the black, nah, it just goes through and soaks. So I think that's always gonna happen with a basic, like water-based ink. This is waterproof. It's just a black India ink. They're gonna, they're gonna penetrate the clock crackle glaze and then give you a solid backing, not give you the crackle. This part is just amazing. It has really, really big crackle. And it was probably pretty warm in here, like at least 71, 72 when I was doing this. So that might also change like the dry time. Maybe you get bigger crackles when it dries slower. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you got some ideas, learned a little bit about crackle glaze and if it's something that interests you. I'm kind of fascinated by it. Might have to get some crackle paste too. But I think I wanna just paint a whole page with it. Like maybe I'll just fill in the whole rest of this page with a paintbrush and then let it dry and then have a heyday on it like this. Because I do like this part with the contrast. This one's fun too, but I think the trick is really high contrast. Thanks so much for watching and be sure you're taking time for crafting and relaxing. And I forget to say it, but if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Don't forget to hit the like button. That really helps promote videos and it doesn't cost you a thing and it's just a really nice thing to do. Thanks, bye-bye.